tell us about um, how this book differs from the you know other book that you wrote um, years ago. Well, I started thirty-ish years ago writing about the microeconomics of loyalty, the loyalty effect laid out customer lifetime value appropriately taking into account the powerful economic advantage of uh, loyal customers who come back for more and bring their friends and that microeconomics focus evolved into leadership issues and then the invention of the net promoter score because well it, you know the, the reality of have you treated a customer so well that they've become a promoter you'll know by their behaviors, that they they do come back, they buy more stuff, they say good things about you, they um, they they aren't as price sensitive, they treat your employees with dignity and respect. These these are the behaviors, but it's really hard to measure in real time and make part of your management system and have your daily priorities set. So I saw the need for a a timely, you know, a way to put a dipstick into a relationship and know almost instantly are we on track or off track and. And so Net Promoter, I introduced in a book called The Ultimate Question. It was a theory. There were only two or three companies using this. Then thousands started using it. it so the next book was now that it's, it's a practice and a, and a system, The Ultimate Question 2.0 laid out the best practices. But as I say, even though that book was pretty clear, it wasn't clear enough because most people don't get it. And, and I thought, I'd better get back to this notion of purpose. Winning on purpose is making a, a pretty radical argument. It says that there is only one way to succeed in business, and that is to love your customers, to, to inspire, if you're a leader, to inspire your teams to treat your customers like loved ones, and then let them sh hear the standing ovations and, the, and feel the love back. But that's just not how businesses run today, and I hope winning on purpose helps, uh, helps correct that. Did you ever envision that the system and would be used the way it is today and as as broadly as it is? No, I mean, heavens, the number of people that have been touched by Net Promoter, it's probably more than have been touched by COVID. You know, the, it's, it's just spread around the world in this unpredictably crazy, I mean, good, generally good way. Um, but then misusing it and finding a way to take a, a really good idea with love at its core and turn it into a, an abusive, ma ma well, to, to bring it to life, you go buy a car at a dealer and they use this net promoter score, but they use it the wrong way and they, they rank order their salesman based on net promoter score and they get him in trouble during the bottom quartile. So you start seeing dealer salespeople just begging and pleading for scores. Uh, it's sort of like the Uber driver who says, you know, you got to give me a five or I'll lose my job. Well, I don't want to give feedback that's going to lose your job, but, you know, the app didn't work. <laughs> How do I get that feedback through? And this abuse of the system by linking it to, to frontline bonuses and career options, it, you know, it's destroyed its effectiveness.